It is the 7th of October. On this day, exactly a year ago, Hamas attacked Israel, triggering Israel's war in Gaza. 12 months of death, bloodshed, violence, destruction later, the war has not yet abated. In fact, the war has expanded to Lebanon, to Iran, threatening to engulf the entire region of West Asia in a bloody conflict. A countdown is on for a West Asia war in a way. On the day the war reached a grim milestone, sirens went off in Tel Aviv after Hamas fired from Gaza. Strikes continued in Israel, Gaza and Lebanon. Hezbollah rockets landed in Haifa, Israel's third largest city. And around the world, thousands marched for Gaza and Lebanon. As critics of Israel called for an end to the war, U.S. President Joe Biden reaffirmed support for Israel. Meanwhile, hostages still in Hamas captivity remain all but forgotten, it seems, as Israel's war has widened to even more fronts beyond Gaza. Is there any scope for the stakeholders to actually take a step back from the brink, a dangerous brink? Has Israel lost all global support and credibility? Here's why we asked that question. In the one year of the war, Israel has dropped 75,000 tons of explosives on the Gaza Strip. 75,000 tons. The Israeli bombing campaign has resulted in an estimated $33 billion in damages. More than 41,500 Palestinians have been killed in the Israeli assault. Most of Gaza's 2.3 million residents have been displaced. Israel says it goes out of its way to avoid civilian casualties and accuses Hamas of using human shields, but it's an allegation that the group denies. In Jerusalem, to commemorate the 2023 attacks, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held a special cabinet meeting where he said that Israel was changing the security reality of West Asia. Listen in. We are changing the security reality in our region for the sake of our children, for the sake of our future, to ensure that what happened on the October 7th will not happen again, never again. Meanwhile, in Gaza, Palestinian and UN officials say no place in the enclave is safe, including the humanitarian zones. We wish to return before October 7. We used to wake up and make our breakfast. I swear since October 7, I haven't made a breakfast like normal people. I don't remember making a normal breakfast like others. Always quick. Everything in our life is done very quickly. Open a can of fowl, a mortadella sandwich. I don't know how long this situation will last. Will they leave us after October 7? I don't know. God willing, this situation is eased. But there's violence on the other side of the border as well. What started as a daily series of tit-for-tat strikes between Israel and Hezbollah escalated at an alarming pace, bringing the region perilously close to a full-scale war. On Monday, Hezbollah fired rockets at Haifa, Israel's third largest city. The Iran-backed group said it targeted a military base south of Haifa with missiles and launched another strike on Tiberias, which is located some 65 kilometers away. Israeli police, in fact, confirmed that rockets had struck Haifa, also a major Mediterranean port. Israeli forces look poised to expand ground incursions into southern Lebanon. In southern Lebanon, 10 firefighters were killed in an Israeli airstrike on a municipal building in the town of Bint Jebel. The spiraling conflict has raised concerns that the United States, Israel's ally, and Iran will be dragged into a wider war in West Asia. In fact, U.S. President and Vice President condemned Hamas's October 7 attack on Israel while reiterating their commitment to cementing a ceasefire deal to end the Gaza fighting. In a statement, Biden said, and I'm quoting here, on this solemn anniversary, let us bear witness to the unspeakable brutality of the October 7 attacks, but also to the beauty of the lives that were stolen that day. Believe that history will also remember October 7 as a dark day for the Palestinian people because of the conflict that Hamas unleashed that day. Far too many civilians have suffered far too much 
during this year of the conflict. Turkey's Erdogan says Israel will pay the price for genocide, quote unquote, in Gaza. Erdogan wrote on the platform X, and I'm quoting, I remember with sorrow the tens of thousands of people who have been massacred by the murderous Israeli government since October 7. And I offer my most heartfelt condolences to my heartbroken Gazan, Palestinian and Lebanese brothers and sisters who lost their spouses, children and families, quote unquote. Meanwhile, the French Foreign Affairs Minister, Jean-Noël Barrault, while speaking at a press conference in Jerusalem, said, and I'm quoting here, force alone cannot guarantee the security of Israel. In fact, listen into this. In Gaza too, force must give way to diplomacy. We have been pleading for months, like most countries in the world, for a ceasefire that will allow the release of all hostages and the unhindered entry of humanitarian aid. We must be consistent. We cannot call for a ceasefire while arming the belligerents. However, such a ceasefire will not be enough to guarantee Israel's security in Gaza. The Palestinian Authority must be able to reinvest in the Gaza Strip. Negotiations must begin with a view to a two-state solution, the only one that guarantees a just and lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Colonization in the West Bank, which threatens the viability of this solution, must end. Throughout the day, the key message was that ceasefire talks need to happen immediately from Rome to Berlin, New York to Sydney. Thousands came out in droves to call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. So that brings us to that crucial question. What is the status of the talks really? Negotiations remain at standstill. Both Hamas and Israel are blaming each other for the deadlock. With a month and an immediate stop of all arms and weapons being delivered to Israel and the continuous impunity Israel receives from Germany and other nations in this world. Across the world, we have seen a rapid rise in anti-Semitism. We are not immune to it here in Australia. The Australia I grew up in would not have tolerated this. Such hatred has been left to fester because our leadership has not been strong enough. Efforts by Arab mediators Qatar and Egypt and with US backing, the ceasefire talks have so far failed to resolve disputes between the two sides. In August, Hamas officials and Western diplomats said that negotiations had stalled due to new Israeli demands to keep the troops in Gaza. However, Hamas remains keen to stop the war and stopping the aggression against its people. And it responded even to Biden's initiative for a ceasefire and to the Security Council resolution and to all regional and international efforts. But unfortunately, U.S. hypocrisy mixed with importance always either blamed both parties and sometimes and more often always blamed Hamas. Even though in closed rooms they acknowledged that the one who squandered all the efforts it's Netanyahu. With the prospects of Gaza ceasefire looking dim, a French US proposal for a ceasefire to end the fighting in Lebanon is reportedly on the table. Parties are continuing to work on it. This comes after the French President Emmanuel Macron on Saturday urged a halt to arms deliveries to Israel. Now, with the fighting shifting from Gaza to Lebanon, the true colors of this war are becoming clear. Israel has demonstrated success against Hezbollah in a way from the walkie-talkie and pager attacks to the assassination of the Hezbollah leader, Hassan Nasrallah. Israel has somewhat restored its military credibility. Still, Iran's massive ballistic missile strike against Israel last week is proof that Israel's enemies are hardly deterred. If Iran and its proxies were to unleash their full arsenal, Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile system will be overwhelmed. Iran, on the other hand, has achieved two victories in a way. The first, it surrounded Israel with its proxies. The second, it has outdone Israel's efforts to stop Iran from nuclear breakout. Today, it is clear. Iran sits at the nuclear threshold. You see, for the past year, the war in Gaza dominated global headlines with the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah boiling on the sidelines. 
Yet, on the anniversary of the war, the situation has reversed in a way. Today, Gaza has fallen off the front pages and Israel has opened a whole new front. It's not that the fighting in Gaza has ended, though. In fact, just last week, nearly 100 people were killed by Israeli airstrikes and ground operations in Gaza. However, the military operation in Gaza, known as Swords of Iron, has not shown any signs of ending soon. And this raises the question of whether the Gaza conflict has become a forever war. A kind of war that both Israel and the US have become all too familiar with. Will Netanyahu draw, will Netanyahu draw up any kind of diplomatic exit from the pit into which he has led Israel in Gaza? Will he actively advance a hostage deal or help find a diplomatic solution to the conflict in Lebanon? Will the remaining Israeli hostages come back home before it's too late? And will there ever be a day after? To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.